Welcome to the Jalen Show. Hello, world. Oh, it is- <laughs> <laughs> and see, this is what you're going to get this episode. Hello, world. It is so fun to see you all. Um, I'm super excited about this episode. For the first time uh, in the four years of the show, we are having a returning guest. Um, and this is going to be super fun for a lot of different reasons. Uh, I wanted to bring our guest back this season, this week, uh, for a lot of different reasons, just to catch up with him. Um, and the last time we had him on was season one, and we were only doing audio at that time. So most of you guys, if you were keeping up, didn't get to see his face and probably heard my crunchy little corny voice at that time. And now I've matured a little bit. So now you're seeing his face and my face. So it's going to be a fun time without me talking too much right now. But let's introduce my friend, my mentor, and most of all, my brother, Mr. Kevin Cuenca. Woo-hoo! Thank you, man. Hey, and I don't know that anyone's ever called me a mentor before. And I really appreciate that because um, Daryl Hawks, who's mm-hmm. no longer with us, was my mentor. And he, yeah. I met him in the Bay Area. He went to, uh, I believe it was the NBC affiliate in Chicago, but super talented sports yeah. anchor, reporter. And um, he was actually in Atlanta. It was a, it was, he was covering the NBA playoffs. Mm-hmm. The Bulls were playing the Hawks and he just passed away like in the middle of the night. And it was super... Yeah. I think he was 38 or 39. I mean, he was younger than I am now. And um, it was very unexpected, obviously. And um, and I'll still see his wife post about their kids and stuff on Facebook. And it's um, even though he's been gone for a long time now, there's still things that like I'll remember from from feedback that he gave. And, yeah. and there's there were different parts of my journey that. I saw that he was like trying to give me a heads up on. Um, And of course, we're all going to make our own mistakes and decisions along the way. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, having that that guidance is is important. And I think it's what's really cool about what you're doing is like, dude, you just said season four, like you've been chipping away at this thing. (laughs) You've been you started with audio. You're doing video now and and graphics look good. I mean, this is cool. It's cool seeing what you've been able to do with it, man. So good job. I appreciate it, man. You are my mentor. You uh, you stuck out your neck for me at a time that I really didn't know what I was doing or where I was going. Um, and we had conversations a lot before we you know we started. I started the podcast, and uh, you helped me out a lot in a time that I don't know if people really knew where I was going and weren't maybe willing to give a at that time 14, 50 year old kid a, a piece of advice and time. I'm like, and I remember you know one of the conversations that we had, and, and people, uh, I'll say this too people watching and listen, this isn't going to be like a normal like interview that I usually do. We're just going to have like a big conversation at this point. But one of the conversations that I don't know if you remember we, we had kind of before uh, the podcast is uh, you just telling me how how kind of like important it was for, for you to see me reaching out at, at 15 and having a, like we had like an hour long phone conversation at like seven o'clock. And it was just meant a lot to you to see a, a, that young of a kid kind of be that determined and be that uh that passionate about it um and to actually make time and take time to ask questions and learn as much as they could so you you've meant a lot to me man if uh if you don't understand that i hope you do uh and that's why i want to have you back on man so we could uh yeah. get a little bit of face-to-face conversation as well so people can to see you and uh and check in on you as well man yeah no this is fun i'm 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 glad to see what what you've been able to do with it and even back then i do remember being um not taken aback. I think that's a little dramatic, but but just <laughs> impressed by by the the research that you put in, and um and then also the fact that you were doing it at the young age. Like when when you're able to get a head start and figure out what you want to do, um, that's awesome. Like there's so many. I remember being at Syracuse in college and having sophomores, juniors, buddies of mine that had still no clue what they were going to do, yeah. and um. And, you know, I think that's probably more normal than what, than not. And so to have a, a vision and a, and a, and a, maybe not a, a specific goal in mind, but just a, a general sense of like, yeah. I know I want to do something in this field. I want to do yeah. something, whether it's being a sports anchor, a podcaster, or host, whatever it is, um, just getting those reps, I kind of almost liken it to how kids now don't always try a lot of different sports. But when you try different sports, you're able to build up skill sets in different ways and, and yeah. learn how to, to move. And, and and I feel like a lot of that stuff carries over 
to where what you're doing now is like you may podcast hosting might be your profession for the rest of your life mm-hmm. or you might be a, an anchor or a host or a reporter or whatever yeah. but like all these things have you know skill sets that carry over and, yeah. and that you can apply to these different fields so the fact that you're just figuring it out seeing what you like and, and don't like and and continuing with this and showing that determination i think is really dope appreciate it man kev real quick uh for people that may be new and uh weren't around in season one to kind of uh well and i'll first say this if you haven't had the chance to go back and, and take a chance to go back and listen to season one episode five featuring my man kevin uh it was a fun conversation i was still getting started and i've gone back and listened to the episode and just uh I've kind of seen my growth in the questions I've asked and the way I've asked them, but if you haven't had the chance, go back and listen to that, man. You, uh, you'll uh, you learn a lot, you'll laugh a lot, <laughs> and you'll you'll take a lot of advice that hopefully I can, that Kevin gave that you can implement in your lives, because I sure did. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Kevin, you don't mind real quick, just give a, a brief little introduction about yourself so people that may be new, may not know a lot about you, just kind of get a, a quick feel about who you are and what you do and uh, who you are and where you are as a person. Yeah, man. and and. I'm still figuring that out, you know, like right now, I'll, I'll give you a quick example and I'll, I'll tell everybody also, you know, what I've done in the past. Like for 15 years, I was a sports reporter. Mm-hmm. I worked at different TV stations around the country and um, was able to finish up at the CBS TV station in Los Angeles. And obviously from 2005 to 2000 and almost 20, um, a lot of changes happened in the sports broadcasting world. Yeah. from the internet to social media, et cetera, that, that really did change the landscape of, of what we did, what was popular. I mean, ESPN, you look at Sports Center, how much it changed in 15 years, where it's like it went from highlights and in-depth reporting to embrace debate and a bunch of debate shows. And so just sports broadcasting in general has changed a ton during that time. And I started to see the growing popularity of social media, A, but B, feeling like, all right, sports broadcasting is my entire life. Maybe I'm able to create some of my own content and have more control of my life through Mm -hmm. creating social media content. And so when you, when you step off the beaten path and and you um, start to forge your own way, there's going to be tons of ups and downs and you're going to be doing things that feel beneath you. And the reason why I say all that and show this is right now I'm in my stepdad's Escalade. I have dropped off wine tourists that are about 50 yards from me in this in this house. And for an hour and a half or so, I get a break and then they come out. I drive them to the next winery and and I'm not doing this all the time, but I am doing this from time to time. Um, And it's my stepdad's business. He's out of the country right now and he kind of sets things up remotely. And then I'm doing actual physical work with driving these people around. And, you know, as someone who, I'll do a humble brag, I, I have won an Emmy in the past and was able to accomplish some really good things in sports broadcasting. And so when you are doing this, it's going to feel like, hey, dude, what happened to your life, right? Yeah. But I know why I'm doing this. Um, yeah. I was able to buy a property in the Bay Area. Um, I am saving up money to build another house on that property. And essentially, that will be able to re- nearly replace the income that I was making at CBS in LA. And so when you're able to have that kind of setup with a, with a property that um, is occupied and, and you're able to gain inf- income from that every month, that will then free me up to doing more out of the country content creating. Like I was just in uh, Colombia recently and we can talk about that, um, doing some some soccer videos and coverage while I was in Medellin, Colombia for five weeks, which I never would have done and been able to do had I still been working for a TV station, right? Yeah. They, you're working year round, you might get two weeks off. Um, but I'm going to be taking multiple trips a year by setting up my life the way that I'm setting it up. But in the meantime, I got to do stuff like this. And so yeah. I think that's part of it too. And I'm still learning yeah. about who I am and and what drives me and what I want my future and my present to be like. And so that doesn't stop. It's like, you know, I think if you're pushing yourself like Dalen is obviously doing and I'm trying to do as well, it's like, there's going to be moments of, 
this doesn't feel right. This doesn't, yeah. this isn't what I dreamt about when I was in elementary school. But when you can get comfortable being uncomfortable and yeah. continue to strive forward, uh, that would be one of the messages that I'd want to uh, portray to people listening or watching this is that like, there's going to be moments where it doesn't feel like your dream. But even then, like, having just come back from Medellin, where the minimum wage for a month is $300, like there's still gonna be plenty of blessings that you can count and, yeah. and then get back to work, right? And, and get back to making your reality your dream. And the more that you can just like focus on that and not let your own inner voice get in your way, I feel like my inner voice is way stronger than any than any criticism I get from the outside world, it's my own inner mm -hmm. voice. It's knocking me down all the time. But like, if you can learn to, to deal with that and almost embrace it and let it drive you as opposed to letting it get you off your, off your path, uh, I think you'll be better off for it. Last time we talked was, was 2020 in the midst of COVID. And I know that you had had at that time so much going on um, and even just a, a few different uh, pieces of sadness going on through your life in the last four years, man. Uh, and in the midst of you just kind of saying what you, what you just talked about, what have you kind of learned about yourself maybe in these last four years that maybe in a lifetime before 2020 that you really hadn't learned or taught about, taught yourself about your own self? Yeah, I think I was really, a lot of my success was strictly work related and very much I was I was really tied into who I am as a person is is dependent on how much success I have in sports broadcasting. Yeah. And that's fine when things are going great and things yeah. do look good on paper, but when they don't, where are you, right? And I think mm -hmm. I've gone through a process these last few years of <clears throat> not stripping away confidence or stripping away who I am, but stripping away some ego. And I think that is can be powerful. Um, it can remind you like what's important. Um, I think COVID slowed us all down and sat us all down in different ways. But, you know, I think since then I've, um, I've been able to, and I think the, the property that I was able to acquire, which is basically a home that I've turned into a duplex and, mm -hmm. and we'll have an additional home built onto that property. Um, I think that's also helped me relieve some of the internal pressure that I put on myself when it comes to social media, content creation, um, being popular online and creating and being funny, all these different things that like, yeah. again, were almost byproducts of me trying to find success in a new field and take the feeling of satisfaction that I had from the sports broadcasting and just bring that over to the content creation and social media side. It's helped to make my sense of self self worth more well rounded, but also alleviated a lot of the internal pressure that I had on myself. Where like if a post or a branded sponsorship didn't go as well as I would have hoped, it used to like really get to me. And now it's like, dude, what are you tripping about? You got tenants in the front. Your mortgage is paid. Like yeah. you've got this that you're building toward. It's, it's helped me to see things from a more well-rounded um, scope. And I think most importantly in that scope is that like, I do have a goal, I do have a dream and it's, and it's personal to, to me in the sense that like, it, it shouldn't matter if someone watching or hearing or listening or seeing what I'm doing, it de if it doesn't make sense to them, that's okay. And, mm -hmm. and I think when you're stepping out and doing something that not everybody else is doing, you have to be okay with it and always not looking like it, you feel like it should, or that you, you know, your talent level is, is higher than maybe what it looks like or, or however you want to phrase it. Um, I think sometimes we got to get out of our own way and not let what, even, even if it's like an internal thing, just giving yourself that grace of like, Hey dude, you've got your goal. You've got your vision. Just keep working yeah. toward it. Not every day. Is not going to be amazing? It's, there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, but there's so many blessings that count along the way. And I think those, 
these last few years have have helped to make me more well-rounded. I think I've grown up um, and become more of a um, an adult. You know, I think when you're not that I wasn't didn't have responsibilities <laughs> as a as a sports broadcaster and reporter, yeah. but I think when you have um, when you have a property, when you're taking care of tenants, when you're doing things like this that you don't really want to do, but it's helping you get toward your goal. Um, it's, it strips away some ego. And then I think has, has put me in a, in a place where I'm more at peace and, and more at ease with, with things and um, trying to be like Bruce Lee, like water, just kind of flowing with yeah. the universe and, and, and the world and, and being less, um, not as tough on myself, I guess is a good way of putting it too. You said something that, that just kind of stuck with me. Uh, when we talked originally, you were 37, now you're 41, but you kind of had to, like you just said, grow up. How can you speak to that to people that are your age, that are adults, but maybe they haven't found their passion yet. Maybe they found their passion, but it wasn't what they thought it was going to be. And they had to reset, or maybe they've gone through a tough period and they're trying to re- re- recap and don't know how to. Talk about how how you grew up and, and uh, what allowed you through all the struggles, all the adversity, all the pain to continue to find steps, even if you weren't in the situation that you once were in your life. Yeah, I think that's a really good question. And, and I feel grateful, but not everybody's going to be in the same situation. And what I mean by this is I don't have kids. I don't mm-hmm. have a wife yet. So like for me, it's easier. Some people are going to listen or yeah. watch this and be like, man, I can't do that. I got two kids and, and yeah. I got a wife or whatever. I got a husband and I've got stepchildren. I've got all these different responsibilities. Yeah. And so I, I say all that knowing like, hey, this is this was easier for me to do because I did not have to think for anybody else. I could, yeah. I had the luxury um, to only think about myself in this manner. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, but the, so I, I preface it all with that because I, I know that not everybody is in that scenario and in that situation. Yes. But I just feel like when... there's a lot of us that deal with like undealt with there's a lot of us that are facing undealt with trauma and mm-hmm. undealt with, yeah. um, you know, we never, you know, a lot of my friends and myself included never went therapy, went to therapy for, you know, emotional abuse that they watched dad place on mom. Um, not, not divorce in the sense of like, I was like, I was actually happy when my parents divorced uh, because I felt like, but that's a, another sign of like, hey, you probably didn't see great stuff growing up if you were happy yeah. that your parents were divorcing when you're in eighth grade. Most kids are like bent out of shape by that. And I was like, finally, dude, let's break this thing <laughs> up. Like, let's, we got to switch this thing up a little bit. So I think that's indicative of like how much <laughs> verbal abuse my dad yeah. was laying, not only on on mom, but also on on us as well. And just how uncomfortable the living situation was with my dad's alcoholism as a kid. Um, so I think. You know, there are many people my age, 40s, 30s, even older, that just kind of got through life and never really looked back to feel like, all right, what have I been through and and what is now limiting me moving forward? What are the limitations I'm putting on myself and where are they coming from? Like, I know for me, I was always the smallest kid in my classes. So I have this like deep rooted, like, physical and an emotional sense of it's probably why I, I try to work out as much as I do um this the sense of like everyone's gonna whoop my ass and I can't and I got like no yeah I can't do anything right if, if, if stuff starts going down like I, I can't handle myself so which is why I got into boxing and working out and these different things because I have like this, these deep-rooted insecurities from being like the little kid yeah. um and I think that's just one example of there's there's many things that we carry on with us through our lives and we never really want to face 
because yeah. we're either uncomfortable or or we're just too busy. We got sh- real S H I T going on. Like we got mm-hmm. kids and and mortgages and these different life responsibilities, really hard jobs that people are working 16, 18 hour days. They come home, they don't got time to worry about how they felt when they were 12 years old and their dad yelled at them or whatever. Like, yeah. um, you know, people get caught up in our own lives and before we know it, these things have shaped how we've moved and, and what we've been, the risks that we didn't want to take as, as we came up and as we grew older. Um, and then we kind of get stuck in our lives. If you got kids and you got these responsibilities where you're like, all right, well, yeah, I feel this internally, but what can I do about it? I got all these things going on. I'm just trying to survive. I'm not trying to like, <laughs> I don't even have the, the mental uh, fortitude or the capacity to try to figure out why I'm in this situation. I'm just here and I'm trying to live and I'm trying to put food on the table for my family. Um, So I think, you know, part of it was just me being able to, because I don't have some of the responsibilities that other people do my age, typically, um, you know, I was able to, you know, face some of the stuff of like, all right, what do you really want to do? What do you really want your legacy to be? And I knew that if I was able to set up my life in a way to where I had more control of it and I didn't have to punch a clock every day and I could actually create some of my own content, but also make smart strategic investments. Cause I've always been, that's one thing about me is I've always been really good about saving and been really strategic with my money, except for, you know, I want to give this, advice to you and and anybody else listening to this. I remember vividly being so excited to buy an Audi A5 when I was 30 <laughs> years old in San Antonio. It was like, I was finally doing well in my career. I feel like, felt like I had sacrificed so much. I was like, man, I just want this car. Mm-hmm. And, and if I could go back and slap myself upside the head, I would right now. Because that car lasted me maybe, you know, I maybe had that car for three years before I had to sell it in LA because I was on food stamps and things weren't going that well at the CBS TV station. Um, and meanwhile, I could have freaking bought a house. I'd be on my like third property by now. If, if, if I had yeah. the, 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 just the thought process and the emotional and the, the maturity back then to feel like, to think like, Hey dude, you got this money. You've got a good job at this Fox TV station in San Antonio. You're under contract for a couple of years don't blow this money on a car yeah use this as a down payment on a house and then when you want to go to la you can be getting income from Mm -hmm. having this as a rental property to help you survive in la which you're going to need hey paul because you're about to this car is going to be you're going to have to sell this car because it's not going to go as well as you think it's going to go in la so like if i could go back and you know correct some of these mistakes i i would but you know i think we all have to make our own mistakes in life sometimes and i know as a younger brother this is super long-winded but like as a, as a younger yeah. brother i always feel like i got i got it figured out mm-hmm. don't worry about it. like i got this i got this don't tell me what to do i i i know what i'm doing right and that has led me to making mistakes in my life and had i been more open to um other people's perspectives maybe i would have heard someone's message louder maybe my mom wanted to talk to me about buying a home and didn't feel like she was getting the energy back from me that she needed to share with me more right and so you know i look back on some of that stuff and feel like yeah i certainly made my mistakes along the way but you know during covid and, and after that these last four years you go through the process of like regret and then you're like all right how do i not make this mistake again how do i write this ship and fortunately i've been able to um fortunately i'm in the i'm in the stages of of writing that ship and and slowly but surely figuring things out you mentioned something um working out is something that i've I've done for a while but i think like this 2024 year it's uh really helped me just become a a better person i I just i just feel better working out every day What, what is being in the gym bring you and bring to your life what what kind of is it like therapy what what does it help you do for your life it's absolutely therapy the the (laughs) the endorphins release that i get um from working out eases my mind i think a lot of times 
when I'm at my most anxious is if I'm thinking too far ahead yeah. or I'm thinking too far behind me also. I've noticed that about myself too. I, I, um, I'm very calculated. So when I make mistakes in my life, I will multiply them and, and I will make them bigger than what they should be. There's a better word for that and it's not coming to my head, but <laughs> it's like, I'm, I magnify those inside my own mind. Um, where it's like, dude, Kev, you knew better than that. Come on, what are you thinking? It's like almost like this this yeah. negative voice in your head. And I think when I'm at peace is when I'm when I'm working out, and when I I think that also helps me when I'm just be grateful and be in the moment more, and it keeps me more present. Um, and I think as we get older, you know, you're not playing pick up basketball with your friends like you used to when you were younger you don't have that sense of of camaraderie and stuff but that doesn't also mean that you can't or shouldn't be active as well right and, yeah. and of course there's people that play in softball leagues and do different things to still have that team aspect but for some like i know for me it's it's all it was always harder to commit to that kind of thing because of just working crazy schedules so it was always much easier for me to just go work out because I could do it on my own time. I didn't have to do it on a team yeah. schedule that someone else had set for me. So it's always, um, I think that's probably what got me into it aside from the, the deep rooted insecurity stuff and just yeah. being like super skinny and feeling like, dude, I don't want to be this skinny. Like I'm freaking frail. I need to get in the weight room. Um, and it also gives me a chance to shout out my big brother, Scott, who, um, you know, whether they'll still be in the playoffs or not when this runs, we won't know right now, but the, uh, he's a strength coach for the Timberwolves. So mm -hmm. my brother is, is huge on working out and is a freaking encyclopedia of mm -hmm. different workouts to do. So he got on me for a, a while. And I remember not wanting to lift weights in high school. And, um, and then once I got into college, I started and, and really, since then, I haven't stopped. Like, I i mean, I maybe took a week or here or there for, to let a tattoo heal or something like that. But in terms <laughs> of, like, big breaks, um, you know, once I graduated from college, there was actually, there was a little bit of time when I stopped working out. I was just so hell-bent on making as much money as I could. But I would say definitely from 25 on, I haven't stopped. So I've been, you know, it's been a good 16 years run of just working out and it, it helps me a lot, man. I think it just makes me more confident. And um, I think more than anything, more than the physical benefits that you get from it are the, just the mental and the, the spiritual of just like, all right, I accomplished something today. Like right now, I take, I, I basically lift Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And usually I would, I would like to do some kind of like boxing stuff on a wednesday or a saturday but i have not been doing that lately but even right now i'm like super sore and i'm not working out today but it's i still have that feeling of like hey dude you killed it these last couple of days like it's okay to take a break midweek to do some driving and make some money and you'll get back to it tomorrow there's a quote uh by the late bernie Mac, and he said have fun be yourself and make mistakes and something that i would say i've, I've learned about myself over the last couple of years uh is I, I become more calm and patient, but uh, I also have learned that I don't have to be perfect at everything. And uh, even though you can try to strive to be perfect at everything, it's okay not to be perfect. Hearing you talk more and more, and I can just hear the growth from the last time in, in the years we've talked, uh, I think you're more understanding of where you've been at, what maybe went into those things, and maybe how you failed and how you can learn into continuing to better yourself. How do you do that? And I say that as seeking, giving advice to people listening, but as well, I know it's never been easy for you to be able to admit that you made made a mistake or maybe continue going in, in a way that maybe you felt was uh, hard or questionable, but how do you continue to know that everything's never gonna be perfect, but you continue to strive and thrive to make things as best as you can in your life? Yeah, I think, man, I, I probably mentioned this I, and I will continue to mention at some at different points in this chat is 
the importance of traveling. Like I was, mm-hmm. I was able to travel at a young age. And the reason why I think it's so important is because, especially once you start getting out of the country, is you see how good many of us have it. Yep. And all we did was get born into a situation. Yeah. We didn't do anything special. We didn't work for it. Like we just got born and that was it. And, and we were born into situation. Now, of course, things aren't always going to be amazing throughout your life, but the, and there's going to be ups and downs and you're going to experience hardship and you're going to go through traumatic stuff. Right. But the, what I'm getting at is that's a human experience. Everyone's going through trauma. Everyone's dealing with the, the personal stuff. But at the end of the day, I was not born into Comuna Trece in Medellin, Colombia, which used to be the literally the most dangerous place in the world, right? You've got favelas built into a hillside or neighborhoods built into a hillside. You had Pablo Escobar. You had drug trade. You still have drug trade there, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, you have literal, like, I mean, you, you just have, you have economic hardship on top of all of the human experience stuff. And you've got people dying left and right. You're seeing people getting killed, you know, whether throughout the world, there are, you know, you look at what's happening in, in Israel, Palestine. Like there are, there are people going through really, really tough life experiences on top of just the normal human experience that we all deal with right whether it's a grandparent passing away different things that are more expected but to be born into that scenario as opposed to what i was born into like that's why i think it's so important to travel internationally because you're able to see like poverty at levels that you typically won't see in the united states and it always makes me so appreciative for what i have going for me in the future and just the and I, it's not even so much the monetary and, and the, the the things that we, the, the the stuff we have right what i'm talking about more is the opportunity like a lot of people are born into situations where they don't even have the opportunity to go chase what they want to chase because yeah. they have to quit elementary school to help their family make ends meet they're working at 11 years old they're yeah. sell, they're out running around selling stuff just to just to freaking help put food on the table, right? And then there's there's not that um, you see it all the time in in different countries where it's like kids got to work to to help their family out, right? And so that's what I'm talking about more so than than the things that we have in in the states is just the opportunities that we have here. The fact that I have a cell phone that I can I'm able to afford a cell phone that I can record and do a podcast just like this or create content on my own. Like um, I was able to go to college because of a grant of a, you know, a college fund that was set by my grandparents before they passed away. And of course I had student loans and grant money and all that stuff too. But, you know, I was able to go to Syracuse in half because of their sacrifice and what they left for me as a college fund. So like, I'm aware of, of these blessings that I've had along the way. And I think when you're able to, think about those and be present and appreciative and grateful um it helps you to continue to push toward your goal and your dream because there are people out there that don't feel like they can do that they don't feel like they're in a situation where they can push toward a goal or a dream for whatever situation is in their life whatever circumstances whether they brought it upon themselves or it was just the cards they were dealt right um and so i i try to be my as much as i can we all get caught up and frustrated with life and feel like we should be somewhere and we're not or whatever but um i do that i do know that more often than not i'm able to sit stand where i am and be like all right dude be grateful for this this is this is this may not be what you ultimately want for your life but you can still be grateful in the meantime as you as you go through this journey and and be mindful of that i love that you said that because we we were talking about before we got on how this is kind of like my down week before i get back to working and traveling 
traveling has brought me, and I've never been out of the country yet, but that is my goal soon. It's just brought me a, a piece of understanding that how much relation I think people have to my life, they really don't at all. And how much relation people may think their lives have to my life, they really don't at all. And so to be able to experience different things is important. Um, and so I appreciate you for saying that. Um, and, and I want to ask you a, a fun question. If you could have dinner with five people, dead or alive, who would they be a why? Oh, man. Uh, well, first, I got to have my, my Nani and Mabuelo there. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, you know what, man? Um, I w this is going to be boring for listeners, but I'd probably want all four of my grandparents <laughs> there because like two of them I was really close with. My mm -hmm. they're 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 on this arm. They're here, um, and so they were a real a real big part of my life growing up. We used to fly from San Diego to their house here in the in the Bay Area in San Francisco. Um, we would we would get picked up at the airport, and then their house was actually in Sonoma, which is further north. But um, so like from the time I was in you know preschool kindergarten, like we would take these trips. So we. We really forged tight bonds with them. Yeah. You know, they passed. My grandpa passed first, uh, and then my grandma, and um, and so. But but, but I was in my twenties by then, so I was I was really tight with them. Um, and my my grandparents on my father's side, who I mentioned that left the, the college fund for me at Syracuse. Um, I really never. I don't remember meeting them at all. Like. There's questions that I have for them. I know that they both dealt with alcoholism and um, both died way before they should have. Yeah. And, you know, I know my, my grandma, Kirsten, passed first before George passed. And, um, you know, I would love to ask them about some things and about my dad. And, and I think it would give me a better understanding for, for the challenges that my dad dealt with growing up and, and would give me more answers in terms of why he is the way that he is. Um, but I would love to sit down with them, um, maybe at one table and then, uh, another table of, and I, I could put my, my super nanny, as I would call her, my great grandma, <laughs> I'd, I'd put her at the table and that'd be one table of five. Um, and then the other table, um, I would say Daryl Hawks, my mentor for sure. Mm -hmm. I would say, uh, I, I would probably want to talk to like some iconic sports folks, like probably Jackie Robinson. Um, I think Muhammad Ali would be amazing to talk to. And um Howard Cosell would probably be a cool one too, because him he was a an old time, one of the original OG sports yeah. broadcasters. And because of his relationship with Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, um, I think that would be really fun to have them all at the table. And um and if I get another one, maybe Robin Williams. I don't know why that's on my mind. Maybe because when you drive into the city now, there's a tunnel named after him. It's like the Robin Williams Tunnel. Um, and I always thought he was brilliant and and really funny. Um, and I think he could have the whole table laughing, too. So that would be a fun table. I probably had more people than, than he wanted, but who cares? No, I, I love it, man. You had a, a great correlation of family in outside of family. And I love it because you yeah. know more than anybody that I'm a family person. Uh, I want to ask you... Uh, by the way, you're getting old. I hate to tell you that you're you're 41. And you are getting old, man. But yeah, go nice. back. <laughs> and that's what I tell old, my mom. Man, mom mom's got some great nice. ones. <laughs> if I let it go longer, it's going to start getting even more pronounced. So I keep it, keep it low. No, I'm just messing with you. Uh, 41, now go back 20 years when you were 21. What mm -hmm. advice and what would you tell 21-year-old Kevin Quaker? Man, I would tell him to I would first and foremost tell him that YouTube is going to be crazy, <laughs> the internet is going to be crazy, and social media is going to be crazy. Like it's okay to keep doing this TV stuff, but yeah, start making YouTube videos. Um, I would tell him to only buy a car that he could pay for cash and have it be used at least four to five years old used and I would tell him to buy a house as soon as he could. And, um, and I would also tell him to start, um, you know, maxing out his 401k and his, you know, have a, have a Roth IRA because of the yeah. compounding interest that you get from those. 
And you know that I think the house thing is probably more important to my life now than I certainly would have envisioned back then. I think I always had this notion of like, well, you get a house when you have when you're married and you have kids, right? Like you mm-hmm. don't you don't utilize it in a way of building generational wealth or setting yourself up for a life where you can do whatever you want because you have enough passive income coming in from from rental properties. I just, you know, never thought of it that way. But now being 41, I certainly do. And, you know, I think there were certain times in my life where I had opportunities to set my future self up for a much more easy path that I wouldn't have to be driving for my stepdad and I'd have multiple properties by now and I wouldn't have to be like doing any of this stuff. And, um, but I'm here now. And I think, you know, sometimes we have to make our own mistakes along the way to see what is important to us. Um, and there was also some unknowns, right? Like when I graduated college in 2004, we had no freaking idea. Social media didn't even exist. We had no idea what was coming with the internet. So like, yeah, that was, it was just changing times, right? You either saw it or you didn't and you, you try to deal with it the best you could. And so there are certainly, you know, missteps along the way, but I think those would be the big ones. I, you know, just having some kind of exit plan. If, 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 if you, if it was, Hey, two words, tell yourself that would be it. Exit plan. I never mm-hmm. had an exit plan. I didn't think it was ever going to end, especially the way that it did. And so yeah. when that, when that came i was i didn't have the control that i'd always had during my career i was powerless in that in that moment of like hey what are you going to do now whereas if i had an exit plan i would have been like oh it's nothing i already got rent income coming from three different properties now i'm good don't even trip and i can just do my own thing and i won't have to set up my life all over again for this new path it would have i would have just been able to go I would have just been able to press go on my exit plan, but um, I'm working toward it now, and that's okay. I want to go. Okay, come back to you now. Yeah. Doing the 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 wine tourist things. Why did you feel like that was needed in your life, and how did you end up getting into that with your stepfather? Yeah, that's just money, brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's just that's just um, you know. Right now, I'm just saving up money, so I'm doing different things. This is one of a few things that I'm doing. So I have um, my house where I'm able to rent out half of it and still live there, Mm -hmm. which almost covers my entire mortgage. I'm able to do this. I'm able to do TikTok ads have gotten really, um, I was going to say they've gotten really popular, but I don't think that really explains it right. I'm doing different ads through TikTok's ad program. They call it like creative challenge or something to that extent. But essentially, you are creating ads for many different companies, whether it's I've done them for the uh, G League All-Star Game to Zyrtec uh, Allergy Medicine. It it really is very um, diverse. But uh, essentially, these are ads that I'm able to ideate, shoot, edit on my own and then submit them through the TikTok platform. And you get paid based on how well the ad does. So I'm doing that as well as, as direct brand deals with, with different mm-hmm. companies through Instagram and mostly Instagram, very little TikTok. But I'm doing these different things, but they all have one similarity and common trait in that outside of the driving that I'm doing, which is more of a short-term thing, um, the rest of the stuff is all work that I'm able to do remotely. So whether I'm in Medellin or I'm in Napa, California, I can make TikTok ads on my phone. I can work with brands directly. I can also do one thing I failed to mention is um, doing digital marketing for a sports app, which I'm currently doing. It's called Vilo. And uh, we got to get you on there, by the way. But it's essentially an app where um, we bring in different news articles. It's all sports related, and we encourage users to react to that content. So it's kind of like a a mashup between TikTok and and ESPN's app, where you're taking the sports news and articles, but also encouraging folks to react in video form to those articles. 
So I'm doing these different things and most of them are all remote work oriented. Whereas the driving, I'm at, I'm literally in the seat driving people around. But um, like, for instance, my, my stepdad's going to return to Napa in a couple of weeks. And at that point, he really won't need me driving folks around unless he's yeah. like double booked or things get really busy. But for the, for the most part, the work that I'm doing is through my phone and it's remote because I'm trying to set up my life in a way that I can be in other parts of the world and still make money, still have rental income coming in from my property and be able to support myself that way and my dream that way, right? Because it's one thing to like, we can all go on GoFundMe and crowdsource and try to take people's hard-earned money. Yeah. But I'm 41, so I didn't grow up in that age, right? Yeah. I know it's more common now to where like people would go on there and be like, hey, I've got a dream. I need $10,000. Give it to me. But I'm from the era where we're like, hey, dude, if you want $10,000 for your dream, go earn $10,000 <laughs> and go do your yeah. dream, right? And that's not knocking anybody. It's just I was I was raised at a time when we didn't have these we didn't have GoFundMe when I was coming up. So mm -hmm. like you if you wanted something, you worked hard and you saved your money and you were you cooked your own meals. You didn't go out to eat. You didn't go to Starbucks every day and spend six dollars on a coffee. Because guess what? Over time that shit adds up. Excuse my language. Like there's there's things that I'm doing in my life, whether it's renting out my house and staying at a bedroom in my mom's place or mm -hmm. cooking all my own meals, or not going out with friends because I'm saving up money for this to build another home on my property. Like there's, there is, there should be some sacrifice. And I think ultimately when I am at that point where it's like, okay, finally, dude, like this is, this is what I, this is what I envisioned for myself. I know I'll be really grateful because of the sacrifice and the work that I put in. And it's not like I'm, I say sacrifice. I know like this isn't sacrifice in the sense of like a U.S. Army veteran or or the, the things that people like really powerful, meaningful things that, that people do with their lives. But I do mean, you know, there's degrees of sacrifice. Right. And and I think when you're able to make those little small changes in your life and be disciplined with it and build it brick by brick. Mm -hmm. When you're done, you'll have something that you're really grateful for, like you yeah. and, and proud of, right? And so I think there's there's meaning behind that, and um, I think sometimes we're, we're looking for the the elevator, and we really need the stairs. And yeah. sometimes because you, when you're on those stairs, you you build up different parts of your your mental fortitude, your internal strength, and and you're able to withstand the challenges that are going to come when you're at the top of whatever that, you know, that staircase led to. Okay. I went back for, I'm going to go back now. No, you're good. What advice would you give to myself, people, my age in college recently at out of college, what advice would you give to us that to continue to feel less, or maybe, you know, there are people out there maybe listening, watching that, or in college or graduating um, and really don't know what to do or, or, or where to go within what they're doing, what advice would you give from out your life experiences to young adults in, in the midst of college, graduating college in that, in that age span? Yeah, I would say first and foremost, give yourself some grace. I've gotten a lot better at that. And I mm -hmm. think that typically comes from life experiences and wisdom and all that kind of stuff. But I've gotten way better at giving myself grace and knowing that I'm that I don't always have the answers. I'm not always going to know what I'm supposed to be doing or how to do something. Um, don't be afraid to ask, but also don't be afraid to make your own mistakes. Like I thought that quote that you mentioned earlier with from Bernie Mac was, was exceptional because you have to be willing to make some mistakes and you're going to take some lumps. Yeah. It's not all going to be perfect. And, and even if you really know what you want to do, there's still going to be times when you're like, man, I thought I knew what I wanted to do. But like, now social media has come along. Now the internet's come along. Like, I needed to be more adaptable. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and less like, less of the little brother mentality of like, no, I got this. I got this all figured out. Because I really didn't. And I think, you know, life will show you like, hey, dude, no, you don't. You don't have it all figured out. So I think just giving yourself grace, but for the people who are, 
have a clear direction, give yourself grace along that direction because you're you're going to be so focused on on what you're getting at and feeling like I gotta I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, and that's great. But there's gonna be times where life's like, yeah, I know you want this, but like here's what here's what I'm gonna throw at you. Now deal with this kind of thing. Yeah. And then the people that don't have a clear direction, um, also give yourself grace, but also give yourself chance to to figure out what you really want to do. One of the most mm-hmm. powerful things that I was able to to have the opportunity to do was internships for different types of the broadcasting field. Like I was able mm-hmm. to get some insight into radio, play by play sports reporting, sports anchoring, hosting, these different things because and now there's obviously even even more avenues you can go. But just having those different lanes in a similar field helped me figure out, okay, now this is this is what I want to do. And then of course, even once you're doing that, things are going to change and and life can can come at you. But I think it's really powerful when you can give yourself some grace in those moments and, and understand even if whether you've got the, the most clear plan for yourself or you really don't know what you want to do, life is going to come at you in different ways, shapes and forms. And if you can just be gracious with yourself, because the world is going to even if the world's not being tough on you, there can be times when it feels like that or your inner voice is going to be tough on you. So just learn into learning healthy ways to deal with that i think is really important it's why you and i work out it's why other people maybe play um frisbee golf do gymnastics something that's not drugs and alcohol like if you can find some some positive outlet for your energy that relaxes your mind and calms you down a little bit because Life is going to beat you up along the way, no matter if you have the best plans and intentions or not. Um, so just give yourself some grace. Understand that, you know, for, for those of us who are fortunate, we're still, you know, more, we have more opportunities than most in the world. And there's always going to be someone with it that's got it worse than you. And so try to be grateful of what you do have and, and keep it pushing. I, I know what, some of your artists are gonna be for this, but what is what is your music playlist like, man? I, you know I'm a music lover, and I know you have a great tie to music. But what's your music playlist like? Your artists, some of your top songs. What are you, what is your music playlist like? And maybe as well, is your gym playlist different than maybe your regular day to day music playlist? Yeah, I would say um, it depends on what I'm doing, but <laughs> gym playlist for sure is uh, like I love. Uh, I think Lil Russell from Vallejo is really mm-hmm. talented and, and talks about things that other young artists aren't always talking about. Um, so I love playing his stuff. I also play um, GB is a, is a NorCal guy that I like to listen to in the gym. Um, and then I have my, my, you know, young Jeezy gets me hyped in there. Um <laughs> who else am I really listening to in the gym? If I'm putting on a playlist, um, those would be like, those would be three dudes. I, I mean, I'm always going to listen to Snoop and, and Tupac, um, Jada kiss, a uh, flawless real talk is a, is a guy I interviewed in the mm-hmm. past for my little car karaoke show. I, I think he's really talented. He's from Rhode Island. He was on, um, I think the show was called hustle and flow on, on BET. Um, and, I like listening to him. He's got a good energy when he's working out. I don't know if I mentioned Jada Kiss and the locks, but um, they'll get you hyped too in the gym. Mm-hmm. When I'm when I'm outside, like if I'm driving my old school car, I'm listening to like Sam Cooke, Marvin Gaye, old soul stuff. <laughs> um, I love listening to to old like Frank Sinatra. I love listening to mm-hmm. the older stuff in in the old car. Um, and then if I'm home, I'll, I, I listen to some, um, Spanish style music too. Like this, this morning I was listening to Aventura. Um, but there's, you know, I, I try to listen to some Spanish stuff as well. Um, because those guys, those guys, uh, I like, I need to hear, to hear Spanish mm-hmm. as well to keep, keep that sharp. So yeah, some, some different folks for sure. Um, and Hey, if I, I can't tell if these people are, and we can cut this part out. 
I can't <laughs> tell if they're if they're coming outside or wrapping up or what. So if we have to fire this up again, we can. Um, mm -hmm. Cause it does look like they're finishing up and then I'm going to have to start driving these people again to the next spot. I so do you. you want me to just hit you from the next spot or what, how do you want to do it? Uh, I can have one I'm more question. Have these. Okay. Um, well, why don't we, let's, let's do your question until like, if I see them, I'll just, I'll, I'll literally like, I won't even give you a goodbye. I'm literally just going <laughs> to shut the thing and, bark, and okay. bounce out. I got you. Until I see them, we're good. So, cause they could still take some more time to finish it up. So, um, but yeah, th those would be the, the folks that I'm listening to, uh, oh. you know, in, in the playlist and stuff. Did you freeze up? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. We're good. Uh, I was literally, yeah. I, I, I was thinking that at that point was coming anyway. So I was, I was going to have one more question for you. Um, and it's usually yeah. it's two, it's two in one, but I, I know you've talked about a lot of uh, advice for a lot of different things. But what's one piece of advice that you would just give people listening and watching uh, just about life in general, things that you've been able to experience? What is something that you've learned that you would give to people and hopefully help them use in their lives and, and legacy, man? I know that's something that we talked about a couple years ago that uh, at the title wasn't really asking, but legacy. When people hear the name Kevin Cuenca, what do you want them to always think and remember about who you were as a person? Oh man, that's a great question. I think um, legacy to me means forging my own way and stepping outside the box, challenging myself, being comfortable, um, being uncomfortable and making it on my own. And what I mean by that is in the future, I'll be traveling to different countries, showing how athletes live in different places and giving a glimpse into different cultures in different parts of the world that maybe you'll never be able to see on your own, but I can, I can help take you there. And I think yeah. a lot of that is what Anthony Bourdain started with, with parts unknown, yeah. but doing it from more of a sports perspective. And um, so that would, you know, I think for me, if I'm passing on it, and if I'm, you know, living by what I'm teaching and what I would want to be teaching is, Hey, figure out what, what outside of how much money you're going to make from it or what it's going to look like to other people. What do you want to do, mm -hmm. man? Like, what, do, what do you really hear? Not only what do you want to do, but what are you here for? And yeah. what can you pass on to the next generation? Right. So, like, I think the more that we can really be present of, like, how do I set up my life so where I can live comfortably, but really do what I want to do? Because yeah. there are plenty of people that are making great money but they're not doing what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And they don't have a smile on their face when they're going into work. Maybe when they look at their paycheck, but a lot of that's getting eaten up by just the the lifestyle that they've then been become accustomed to, right? So I think the more that you can truly do what you want and be present enough to understand how grateful you are or grateful you should be if you even have the opportunity to do what you want to do because there's plenty of people around the world that don't have that same opportunity. Um, yeah, like, that's what I would want to encourage people to do. Like, if you at night aren't worrying about if you're going to have a meal or not, then my encouragement to you would be to find what makes you happy in life and go do that. Understandably, not everybody's going to feel that way. If you don't know what you're going to eat that night, or if you can even afford a 99 cent whatever at a at a at a restaurant at a McDonald's or whatever, like they don't even have anything that's freaking 99 cents anymore, but you get my point. Like if you're, if you don't know where your next meal is coming from, then you've got bigger things that are going to be yeah. on your mind. But if you're blessed enough to know, like, all right, dude, I'm not worried about my next, where my next meal is coming from. I really want to encourage folks to, to understand like our time on here on this planet is not infinite. It's finite. And th this, the sooner that you can, start working towards setting up your life, having an exit plan for maybe something that you don't want to be doing, but working toward and saving up and being disciplined so that you can at some point have your life set up to where you are doing what you want to do daily. Um, that would be my biggest encouragement. That's what I'm currently working toward. And I hope that some of you um, will he take heed of, of that advice and, and work toward that as well. Thank you, man. Um, 
uh, I don't even know where to like begin. I, I'm just so grateful that we were able to do this um, and, and connect because I know it's been a while um, and it's meant a lot to hear your voice and, and hear your more advice and experiences a little bit more in depth than what we talked about a couple years ago. Um, so thank you, man, uh, because I know you've gone through a lot, but I'm always praying for you. I always got your back. And so I'm always wishing for the success on your side of the end, man. So it means a lot to see you and have a chat with you and, and know that you're doing good and still progressing in the ways that you want to progress in. Dude, the feeling is mutual, man. Like the fact that you've done four seasons of this, you're still chipping <laughs> at it and you're, you know, you're getting, you're doing way more than I was doing it at this age. So like <laughs> my encouragement to you would just be to just keep going, just keep doing it and seeing and trying your hands in different things, which you're obviously doing to figure out what you want to do. Right. Cause yeah. we all hear from other people, what we should be doing with our lives. But at the end of the day, we all know what truly moves us. And, um, and the more that you can keep, working toward that fine tuning that and figuring that out that you know you're just going to be happier in, in life so i think it's awesome to see what you're doing and i'm excited to see what you got coming for you in the future too with, with having your hands in in different things so i think it's it's dope and it's exciting to see what you're already what you've already built but what you're building toward as well i appreciate it brother it means a lot to me uh Okay, real quick, uh, can you share your social media links so people can follow you uh, and reach out if they ever want to as well? Yeah, and, and if you see the name there, which is right there, Kevin Cuenca, <laughs> if you just add a TV onto that, that's all my social media platforms. So it's just at Kevin Cuenca TV. And if you're only listening to this, it's K-E-V-I-N-C-U-E-N-C-A, T as in Tom, V as in Victor. Um, on all social media platforms, Kevin Cuenca TV. Thank you, man. Uh, folks, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. This was so fun to do. Uh, Cause like I said, before we started, this wasn't gonna be like a normal, like interview <laughs> conversation that I usually have. This was kind of more of a, a catching up, I would guess, um, in, a, in a really good piece of just life conversation between the two of us. So I enjoyed this a lot. I really did. Um, and I hope you guys did. You take some of the advice that Kev got, gave to you guys and use it. Um, and if you do, Reach out to Kev and say, I know you don't know who I am, but I listen to you on Dalen's podcast and your advice means a lot to me. So that's what this is for. Uh, that's what the whole show is for. So I hope you can do that in your lives. Thank you again, man. Uh, I really can't express that enough. And you're changing people's lives. Whether you realize it or not, you really are, man. So thank you so much. Good job. The Dalen Show, dude. <laughs> Killing it. Thank, and thank you for those kind of words, too. I don't want to, like, I was certainly, you know, internalizing that thank you for the for those kind of words it means a lot man as, as someone who's had mentors and and it's significantly uh, one significant mentor um you know anytime he would always say pay it forward and i think yeah. this you know in, in our relationship is a chance for me to pay it forward and i think yeah. hopefully some other people um you know hurt us out as well and and that's that can magnify the the paying it forward. And I know that you'll do that with your opportunities in the future too. So I'm, I'm happy to see where you're at, man. And this was fun to do. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. Take care of you guys. God bless. Please enjoy as well. All love everybody.